Hi, my name is Brandon Grayson. I'm a high school math teacher. We're going to learn about a special type of polynomial function called a power function today. Let's just first remember what is a polynomial function. So a general polynomial function can be described like this. Um, we can call it f of x or p of x, something like that. And it has some degree n and each term has a coefficient. So here we describe the first um, term, the leading coefficient is a sub n, that's a little subscript. So if this is like a fifth degree polynomial, this would be a5 and then x to the fifth. And we continue to the next one, n minus 1, and the exponent is n minus 1. So this would be like the fourth term coefficient, and this would be the number 4, 5 minus 1, and so on. We do that all the way down until we get to the last couple of terms. Now a polynomial can have just a constant term, this one at the end, or it can have any number of terms in the middle here. We usually write them from highest degree down to lowest degree. This is a degree zero term at the end right here. Um, and this once again is called the leading coefficient. And this n is the degree of the polynomial. Each of the a's is a coefficient, it's just a number. Um, and any of them, except for the very first one, can be zero, so that we don't have to have all of these terms. It could just be a single term at the front here. Um, so let me just write down an example. A polynomial function might look something like this. 3x to the fifth plus 2x minus 7. So this is a degree 5, n is 5, a5 is 3 here. It's just a label, that's all we're using. a sub n is a label to refer to this coefficient. None of these terms are in there, but this one is the first degree, x with the exponent 1, coefficient of 2, and there is a constant term for this one as well. Now a power function is a special type of these. A power function has a single term. It, so it looks like this, uh, f of x equals a sub n, that's the coefficient, x to the exponent n. And that's it, no extra terms, just a single term is a power function. So as an example, you might have something like 4x to the seventh. Okay, so this is a simpler kind of polynomial, and we're going to look at um, what that means for the graph of it and what its behavior is as we go to the left and the right on the graph. Okay, so they come in two flavors. The first flavor is an even degree, and the second flavor is an odd degree. So the one I listed here is an odd degree. And I'll do a few little sketches to show you what these look like as well. So let's write down a few examples first of all of what these look like. Um, start with f of x again, I suppose. Uh, a familiar one for you is the quadratic function, the quadratic parent function, x squared. A different one might be x to the exponent 4. Notice the a value is 1 in each of these. That doesn't have to happen though. We could have something like this. There, the exponent is 6. That number 5 is an odd number. doesn't matter. All that matters is the exponent itself. And as long as we have these uh, positive a values like this, 1, 1, 5, then we're going to get this kind of graph. Let me just draw a little sketch. If a is a positive number, if a is greater than 0, then we have something that looks pretty much like this. Here's my axes. And it's going to look like this. It's going to go through the origin. It looks a lot like a quadratic. The bigger the exponent, it'll change the shape slightly, but it will go through the origin, 0, 0 and it goes up to the right and up to the left as well. If a is a negative number, we're going to get something a little different. Draw my, well, this sketch is going to be quite tiny. I'm at the bottom of the page now. If a is a negative number, that reflects it vertically, and we end up with a graph that looks like this. So those are for the even degree power functions. 
let's take a look at the odd degree functions then. First, let's write a few examples. Uh, maybe I'll use some different letters. How about j of x? I don't like to use i. Um, how about just x equals x? So that's a linear function, kind of up to the right, down to the left. Um, how about negative 2x cubed? Cubed, that's a degree 3, that's an odd degree, doesn't matter that the number out front is even, doesn't matter at all, and that one's reflected. And JK, let's do L. How about uh, 4x to the fifth? And as long as the exponent is an odd number, and it's just a single term, that's what we have, a power function with odd degree. So once again, if A is greater than zero, so we have a positive a value like the first one here, or this last one, then our function basically looks like this. Here, I'll try to squeeze a little more on the page this time. The right-hand side looks similar, but the left-hand side is going to go into the negative uh, area here. Squaring stuff, or to the exponent 4 or 6, kind of gets rid of the negative portion of the x, that's why it goes positive even though the x values are negative. Here negative x values stay negative, that's why it's moving down to the left. And if we have something with a negative a value, like negative 2x cubed, then the graph looks a little different. Once again we get that vertical reflection, so the whole thing is flipped over top to bottom reflected in the x-axis, so that means that the negative x values will produce positive y values, and vice versa. So one way that we discuss these different kinds of graphs is to talk about what we call their end behavior. The end behavior is what happens when you go extremely to the right or extremely to the left. Where do they go? Do they go up or do they go down? or later we'll see some different kinds of functions that might approach the x axis um, as you go to the extreme distances. So this one here, this one that points up to the right and up to the left, it, this goes up into quadrant one here forever, so this goes to positive infinity as x goes to positive infinity. As x goes to negative infinity this way, that is as we move left, this goes to positive infinity as well. So that's how we can describe the end behavior. So this one is an even degree power function, something like x squared or 5x to the fourth with a positive leading coefficient. Notice, I, sorry, I missed writing the subscript earlier, so we should write a sub n there. Um, and we notice that it goes up here and up here, that's quadrant one and quadrant two. Um, one of the ways though that we write this is like this. As x, and we say goes to by drawing an arrow like this as x goes to, or sometimes we say approaches, positive infinity. So that's moving to the right. Positive infinity is over here. So as x moves to the right, extremely to the right, or approaches positive infinity, our function here, which I'm going to call f of x, f of x does what? It goes to, well it's going up to positive infinity as well. So that tells us what happens on the right hand side of the graph. Now we also would write down what happens on the left-hand side of the graph. As x goes to negative infinity, f of x goes to, well it's also going up, so that's positive infinity again. So I can tell by reading this what kind of graph I must have here, up to the right and also up to the left. So again, another way to write this is to say that this goes up into quadrant 1, which we use with a Q and a capital letter I, the Roman numeral 1, and this is quadrant 2. That's where it ends up. It ends up in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2, so you know it kind of points up in each direction. Okay, let's go on to the even degree where we have a negative leading coefficient. So this one points down to the left and to the right, so let's start off by talking about the right-hand behavior. So once again, as x goes to positive infinity, that's to the right, f of x goes to, this time it's going downwards, forever, so it goes to negative infinity, as x goes to 
the left to infinity. What happens to the function? The function is moving up or down. Looks like it's moving down again to negative infinity. That would be, uh, let's see, quadrant one, two, three, four. So this is quadrant three, that's this one. And this one over here is quadrant four. So this one goes on to quadrant three and quadrant four. Okay, let's look at the odd ones. Now I'm hoping you might be able to pause and do these on your own. Feel free to give it a shot and then come back here and check out what I write for you. As x approaches positive infinity, moving to the right, what happens to the function? Also going up to positive infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, going to the left, f of x, uh, this time it's going to go downwards into the negatives, negative infinity. Uh, and I suppose I'll write down the quadrants again. That's quadrant one, and this is quadrant three. Last, this is our last possible variation. As x moves to positive infinity, moving to the right, the function is dropping down into the negatives. And last, as we move to the left, the function moves up towards positive infinity. So that's quadrant four. And quadrant two. Okay, a couple more things about power functions then. Let's see the symmetry that we have. So even degree power functions always look like this, symmetrical about the, the uh, y-axis. So they're a perfect mirror image, maybe a bit more perfect than what I've drawn here. But the symmetry is about the line, um, x equals zero, the y-axis. So I'll just write that down here. These are symmetric. We say about, which means sort of flipped around the line, uh, that's the line x equals 0, which is the y-axis. Now, we don't have that symmetry with the odd degree ones, but they do have a symmetry. They have what's called rotational or point symmetry around this point, the origin. So if you were to take this curve over here, kind of cut the curve in the center, and rotate it around, stuck to the middle there, it would line up perfectly along this bottom part. So imagine rotating it like, a, like the blades of a fan. It would slide around and perfectly line up on this lower part or vice versa. So we say here that these odd degree power functions are symmetric about the origin. And that, that origin, of course, is the point zero, zero. And you can think of this as um, as a rotational symmetry. So maybe I'll just write that down too. So it's rotate, you can rotate 180 degrees um, about the point zero, zero. And when we say about, we're it's sort of like stuck to that point. Okay, so that is the symmetry for all even degree power functions and all odd degree power functions, no exceptions. All right, time to discuss everyone's favorite topic, domain and range. Those are the x values you can put into a function and the y values that it can produce. So here we have an even degree power function. I've got a positive leading coefficient. And I want to point out, too, that the, um, the degree has to be at least 1. Well, actually, I guess it's even, so it has to be at least 2. Let me fix that here and here. Um, and the reason is that if the degree was zero, you'd have a horizontal line and the range would be just that single value. So those are pretty simple for the domain and range, but we're going to do the ones that are um, at least degree two, like a quadratic or bigger. Um, so the domain is everything. X is an element of the real numbers. So if I were to draw like a number line, it would just include all possible values. Now, the range, though, is not everything. It's the set of all y values that are real numbers, such that, now here, they start at 0, and it goes up from there. There are no negative y values. 
So we can just write that y must be greater than or equal to 0, and that's the restriction on the range. I'm hoping that you can see what's going to happen here. The domain for these ones x is an element of the real numbers again. That is, you can put any x value you want into the function and you'll get an answer out. You'll have a y value that's produced. The range is once again restricted. Similarly, y is an element of any of the real numbers. It's any real number. And this time, the y value can't be positive. It's 0 and below. So y is less than or equal to 0. And this is set builder notation. Okay, let's look at the odd ones. domain, possible x values, x is a real number, and there's no such that, there's no restriction here, because we can just continue to the left and the right infinitely, and when I look at the range, this goes up forever, it also goes down forever, so we actually also have a range of all possible values. So every value will be achieved somewhere on this curve. And the last one, when we have the NA value that's negative, everything is the same. The whole thing's flipped over, so it will still just achieve every possible value. Now we've looked at lots and lots of different properties of power functions, and I think it's a good time to try to summarize all of this into a chart, sort of four rows, um, the two even degree types and the two odd degree types, the way that I've broken it up here, and uh, write down the domain and the range and the end behavior, and maybe a little sketch and the symmetry. Try to get all that into a single chart to summarize what we've learned. Okay, thanks.